Are you ready? I'm always ready. <sighs> okay, Fallon, you ready? Yes. Name three candy brands. Uh, like just like Snickers. Okay. Yeah, 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 so you gotta, okay. Oh, okay. We'll try that Let's again. Try it again. Name three places that start with the letter R. Um, Reebok, um, um, Ridgedale Mall. <laughs> Reebok has a store. Reebok does. It's a store. It's not a place. It's a, well, it's it's a, a shoe. Store. I know. It's a shoe a... store. <laughs> it's legit. Roll the open. <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Thank you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. How you doing, audience? How you doing? Good. Another full house today. Well, let us start with this. Let us start with this. Odds are, oh, no, that's the hot dish. That's the hot dish. That too soon. Leo is very excited for the hot dish today. Director Leo. Okay, first up, odds are, let's start with this, maybe. It's not going to be good, is it, today? It's going to be, no. Odds are, leaves are piling up outside your home, but this pile has something extra. Look really closely. Seriously, just wait. Look, there's a dog. There's a dog. Look for the snout in a giant pile of leaves right there. <laughs> that is the best thing ever. That's right there. Yeah. The, I could look at that all day. The owner says the owner says their dog can't resist a big old pile of leaves. This video, as you can imagine, already has millions and millions of views on social media. And right after the show, we're going to bury photographer Eric in some leaves. That's right. <laughs> Let's start the show rolling, Leo. Here we go. for Fallon, everybody. Oh. You just want to boop the nose. I know, I did. You just want to boop. I, this song, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, I got it. I went to a wedding one time. I went to, oh, wow, that cut off fast. I went to a wedding one time with my friend Kristen, and uh, she, we went to a lot of events together, and we were at this wedding. And I think the, the wedding party, I think everybody at the wedding thought we were married. And <laughs> we, we get up, and this is also the wedding. This was a two-prong wedding disaster. We get up to the buffet audience, and we get up, and we're one of the last tables to get up to get food. Uh. And we get up there, and I'm not joking, there's one chicken breast floating in water uh, in the thing <laughs> that was left over. So Krista and I split the, split the chicken breast, <laughs> and then there's like three green beans. And then we go back to the mm -hmm. table, and we're eating. And the dancing starts, it starts, and nobody wants to dance. You know how that is? Like yep. the first couple yeah. dances, nobody wants to go out there. So Wake Me Up Before You Go Go comes on, and Kristen goes, let's go! And we go out there, and I'm not joking, this was me. Let me unbutton this. So this was me, this was me on the dance floor. Uh, and Kristen, we were both going like this. We're like, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> and we're like doing like this. And we're right by like a table of people, and I could hear the wife of one of the men go, oh, I wonder if she knows her husband's gay. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if she knows. Poor girl. Poor girl, yeah. I mean, 
I did kind of show my cards that day. I, did, yeah. <laughs> I but thought you didn't dance. I don't dance. I don't know how to dance. I do not know how to dance. But oh, it was so fun. That, that woman was so serious and sincere. Oh, my she gosh. She was so worried about Kristen yep. thinking that her husband was gay. Yep. You know, it's like, no. Also, nothing is worse than being the last table that gets the food at a wedding. Nothing is worse. Because you're yeah. already just ravenous because you've done the full ceremony. They made you do a weird one to two hour cocktail reception that only had like a mozzarella ball appetizer. Yeah. Yes. And you are so hungry. And now you're a couple drinks back. You're getting a little loose, you know? Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> I have, Jeff, don't get mad. I have one, I, 30 seconds. The worst wedding story ever. Where this, I'll make this quick. With food related, I've been to a lot of good weddings. But anyway, uh, we were at a wedding in the middle of nowhere. And we, I've told Colin, who doesn't get hungry, Colin gets hangry. Mm. And if you don't, if, if, the, if you don't feed him, it gets bad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I said, don't worry about it. There's going to be food at the reception. Three hours later, uh, the little attendant goes, okay, it's dinner time. Everybody come up. Colin runs up to the, <laughs> swear to God, Colin goes up to the buffet and she goes, okay, here's your protein. Here's the veggies. The protein cut up Slim Jims. <gasps> yeah. You're lying. Oh, no, if we call Colin right now, he will bet. The protein at this wedding were cut up Slim Jims. And let me tell you, I know these people, they had some money. They, it wasn't like they were, they had money to buy protein. And then it was like Slim Jims, some Skittles, some Mike and Ikes. Colin comes back. And he is like, we uh -huh. are getting a divorce. We are getting, <laughs> we are getting a divorce. Yeah. I cannot imagine. Oh yeah. Oh. And it took place in Indiana. There yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. We're just anyway. Oh, okay. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> now it's time, Leo. <laughs> oh gosh. Hollywood is back at work this morning. The Actors Union agreed to a new three-year deal with Hollywood Studios near Yes. Yeah. Ending ending the nearly four-year strike. As soon as news broke last night, cast and crews on TV shows received notices of start dates, which means new shows could return in early 2024. Now, actors can also start promoting their movies again just in time for award season. So I was saying uh, the late night shows are going to be real interesting tonight oh, because I'm now sure. everybody will be able to talk and talk and mm -hmm. talk and talk. And, and they haven't been able to talk for months. So they got a a lot of stuff built up. They have up. a lot yes, to promote. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is great news. They made advances. We don't know a lot about the details, but here's what we know. They got a good wage increase and they made a lot of advances in AI uh, negotiation. Okay. Basically, bottom line, the studios, uh, let's say, let's say Julia Roberts, the studios will not be allowed to scan the likeness of Julia Roberts and then use her in perpetuity without paying her, Gosh, which they were allowed to do oh, before so this. Oh, sketchy. So, yeah. look, I mean, I know no one, you know, when you think of A-listers, no one is feeling sorry for them. Again, these con the, these negotiations were never about the A-listers. It was always about the day-in and day-out yep. actors who could barely, barely pay for their insurance. Yeah. So. And it was great that the A-listers were supporting them because yes. they could have been like, oh, we're fine. But yeah. they were like, no, let's do this for everyone. So Absolutely. It yeah. Next up, it's the TV Christmas movie I actually will be watching. Fallon watches them all. I, I'm a little more picky. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, the trailer for Ladies of the 80s, A Divas Christmas just dropped. <laughs> And yeah, I like this movie, so just like uh, my dancing skills, it shows you I'm gay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it just dropped and it features some of my favorite women on the planet. Watch this. This is gonna be great, the four of us together. She's back! By the legendary divas. If she's doing the show, I'm not. Together at last. Last on your face, lift, ladies. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a bumpy weekend. I'm stoked that you're available to direct this. Are you two an item? Friends from college. With benefits? No. No. You don't always get to choose who you fall for. Listen to her, she's had five husbands. And I wouldn't trade any one of them. Well, maybe that last one. Five 
icons from the uh, era of the 80s uh, come together for this new movie. So the deal is they play soap opera stars that reunite to shoot a Christmas episode of their show. Uh, and Tiffany, another icon of the 80s, Tiffany provides the theme song. And it premieres on December 2nd. So I will not be doing anything else on December 2nd <laughs> except watching this. That's a, it looks great. It looks like every movie I watch on Lifetime. I'm excited. I know, but whoever made that trailer, what's wrong with you? You didn't give Linda Gray one line in that. Aww. You just had her going like this. Like that. Let Sue Ellen talk. Give Sue Ellen a line. That's fair. And Only I, half the audience knows who Sue Ellen is, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. No, that's yeah. right. It does not. Yeah. <laughs> that's my girl. I, that's my girl. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I didn't know how rough that trailer viewing was going to be for you. It's really rough. Yeah. I mean, you gave you gave Morgan Fairchild a line. Give let Sue Ellen speak two lines. What if oh. what if December second she only has like two lines of the whole movie? <laughs> <laughs> No, dearest lifetime. Dearest lifetime, yes. I will be writing a strongly worded email. We have a lot more to come. Leslie Miller and the Cooking Mom coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. You may not know it, but country music star Blake Shelton has a lot in common with my friend Fallon. Oh, <laughs> is that right? It, yeah. Wait till you, wait till you see this. Okay. Blake talked about a pet that he had as a child last <laughs> night on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Look at this. He told some like small magazine a story about a the fact you had a pet raccoon when you were a teenager. <laughs> How did really you do a, your research here? Uh, we do. Uh, yeah. How did you get a pet raccoon? Well, I lived out in Oklahoma. Uh -huh. It wasn't hard to come by, uh, you know. <laughs> a, 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 a but this raccoon. is like a raccoon you put a leash around. Yeah, I really raised the thing from, from a baby, like bottle fed it and, and raised it. There's a picture of me floating around out there on the internet. I was on the cover of the uh, Ada Evening News, Ada, Oklahoma. There it is right there with, with my raccoon. <laughs> You Some lady, I was know. walking down the street with my dog and my raccoon, like you do in Ada, Oklahoma. <laughs> and she stopped and she was like, oh my God, is that raccoon just following you? Or is it your, I was like, no, it's my pet, you know? <laughs> and she took a picture and they put it on the cover of the, of the newspaper. <laughs> wow, you're destined for fame, even from a young age. <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, just in case you, you missed it a few weeks ago, we showed you this picture of a young Fallon with her pet <laughs> raccoon. That's Fallon right there. Uh, with Boss Hog, or what was the critter's name? What was? Thank you, Rascal. Rascal. The name. And that was technically my Uncle Eddie's pet. Yes. <laughs> but Fallon sure does look comfortable with that critter, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. look yeah. how sweet it was. But, Again, as we say, that's, well, that's what we had in Indiana. Yeah, Indiana, a little pet raccoon. That's yeah, fine. We were all Ellie Mae, you know? <laughs> we had $400 for that Beverly Hills reference, Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> reference. No, the weirdest thing I ever had was a ferret. I've talked about him over the years, oh. but yeah. Nanook. No. <laughs> Nanook, yeah. Nanook. Yeah. You only had one ferret? I only had one ferret. And he leapt out my window uh, uh, my freshman year of college. And the audience is stunned silent. But yeah, yeah, did yeah. He, did he come back? Um, sure, Fallon. Oh, yeah, he came back. He came back. He came back. There's kids watching, so he came back. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. Sheesh. Oh, no, 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 no. The end. Uh, that got dark. Yeah, I Quick. did. It made my freshman year real horrible. Yeah. yeah. Next up, BravoCon <laughs> invaded Las Vegas last weekend, and while the event's over, it's still creating headlines. Joining us live with more is the host of the Hollywood Raw podcast. Give it up for Dax Hold, everybody. Hello, hello. Good morning. By the way, Jason, what, buddy, I also what? used to have pet raccoons as well. Wait, wait, wait. You you had pet raccoons too? I did. I did. I, we had a pair of, uh, like, we had two of them. My dad is in construction, and the construction site apparently, like, chased off the mom or killed the mom or something. And so my dad was like, well, I need to take care of these raccoons. So we had two raccoons while I was growing up. <laughs> you were, Dex, your house was like a Disney movie. 
I it, wild. I I don't know what to tell you. I thought that that was normal. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's just get right to it. You were everywhere with Melissa Rivers, uh, back uh, backstage at BravoCon. Uh, give me some bullet points. What 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 did you love? Yeah. So Melissa invited me to go to BravoCon with her because she's like, oh, I got an extra VIP ticket. You want to go? I said. Uh, of course. So we were doing like a combo episode of our podcast. Her podcast was Group Text, mine Hollywood Ross. So we just kind of did a combo deal about all of BravoCon. So we made it our mission day one just to see how much free junk we could get from all of the different booths at Bra BravoCon. Because if you're there, it's all the different housewives and different Bravo celebrities. They all have booths because they're hawking their merchandise. And so we were like, it's great that we could buy this stuff, but it's way more fun to try to get free stuff. So we went around and we were getting hair extensions for free. We were getting <laughs> sunglasses for free. We were getting clothes. I got a sleeping mask, all kinds of random stuff just because we were finagling our way through it. So we tell you all about that in the episode this week. And day two, again, we had VIP badges, but that's not, that doesn't get you backstage. So we devised a plan how to get backstage to hang out with all the actual celebrities of BravoCon. <laughs> what did you do? So we, uh, we got a lot of attention on some Melissa Rivers and made like a swarm of people around her. And then I went over and I told the security guard, I'm like, Melissa's being swarmed. Can you take us to a safe place? <laughs> <laughs> and they, they ushered us backstage and we were like, bingo! And then we got to hang out with all the celebs back there. We took our, a little piece of red square carpet and we'd throw it down on the ground so we could have a red carpet moment with anyone, anywhere we wanted. So we got like Kyle Richards, we got Captain Sandy. I mean, we got everyone and we, we ran into Andy back there. It was the craziest day, um, or that craziest two days, and we talked all about it on the podcast. Highly, highly recommend you go listen oh. to it if you are into Bravo. Well, I think the audience will be with me. I think it is scandalous. Melissa Rivers and you can't get backstage passes? Come on! Well, that's what it's because you, you had, they were very protective over their talent badges. Like, you couldn't get back there unless you were talent, and... Uh, we made ourselves available to be back there. <laughs> I love that you the whole, did. The, the whole time we were like kind of hiding our bands, like, please don't notice. Please don't, please don't notice. It's going to be really embarrassing. I cannot wait to listen to this on the way home. Thank you, buddy. And great post, Thank by you. the way. You're helping a lot of people. I wanted to tell you that. Uh, you want to see it? Yeah. By the way, guys, when we're talking about it, Dax posted a really brave, yeah. Dax, tell folks real quick what, you, what you've been through. So I was, uh, I got, a, I had a, a funky looking mole, which turned out to be melanoma, which they, uh, they went in, removed, and had to, just a huge chunk of skin surgically removed. And uh, so I was just urging people, I was telling you all about the journey and what it's been like. It's been a pretty scary couple months, uh, but just keep an eye on your skin. Yes. If there are any moles or, you know, sunspots that start to change shape or color, look funky, they feel weird, or they become asymmetrical, go get them checked out. Skin cancer can be very deadly very quickly because it can spread through your body. So go check out your skin. Yep, you're gonna help a lot of people, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Check out the Hollywood Raw podcast wherever you get your podcast. More dish for you now. We've talked a lot about Barbara Streisand this week with the release of her new autobiography, but Barbara's two and a half hour, two and a half hour interview with Howard Stern was so good. We had to share some clips now that Howard's released them. At one point, this is the first one, at one point Barbara talked about the movie roles that she passed on. Look at this. I was talking about a movie that I was once asked to be in, directed by him, and I said, I'm so sorry. I didn't take that role, but I didn't what think was I the movie? was a good... It was called Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Yeah, you and, turned down uh, Splash, you turned down Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. There was a lot of uh, mentions of movies you turned down. You could have had any movie. Because there's a part of me that's very lazy. I don't believe that for a second. I know you don't you're believe such, it. But, but you're I'm, such a worker. I, I, I work I, when I work, and I'm a total worker. You know, right. totally concentrated on that project. But then when the projects finish, I am so happy to be not working. She deserves to not work. So, Barbara also talked about the fact uh, that her romance, at the time, romance, with her husband James Brolin, 
inspired a classic 90s love song that we all know. Look at this. That song, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, is based on your husband. Can you believe it? That's some he story. He said that to me, and I repeated it on TV with Barbara Walters. I mean, what a thing to say. It's the most romantic he, thing I've ever heard. I, I know. He says to you, Barbara, I yeah, don't want to go to sleep. We're both in a spoon. We're spooning. You know, we've done our bits or whatever. And I'm about to fall asleep, and he says that to me. My what do you say exactly? I don't want to fall asleep because then I'll miss you. Oh, my Holy God. Holy mackerel. Okay, yes, I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, as Barbara said, singer, uh, songwriter, rather, Diane Warren was watching uh, Barbara's interview with Streisand and ended up using that line in Aerosmith's I Don't Want to Miss a Thing that let us just bring it all the way back. That video was shot here in Minneapolis at the Armory. That's right. And Leslie Miller, who's coming up from oh, the Wine Diva, she and her and her husband are like basically own the joint. So there we go. There's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's been six degrees of Leslie Miller. That's, uh, <laughs> no, this interview, I, I don't want to go too much. I could do a whole half hour. On, and I know you're probably sick of me complimenting uh, Howard's uh, interview skills, but he is so good in this conversation, you guys, when you watch it, not just, you can even just listen to it, you can tell that Barbara has affection for him and that she has, uh, he has affection for her. Mm -hmm. The way they interacted, it was delightful. It went so fast. She couldn't believe it was two and a half hours. I couldn't believe it was, I could have had another hour and a half. It's so good. Yeah. Go listen to it if you're a fan of either. Next up, grab an ecto cooler and strap on your proton, oh. proton packs. <laughs> yeah. well, well, okay. Okay, right. the Ghostbusters are back. Uh, and we're, yeah. It sounded perverted for like f two lines there, but yeah. We're getting our first look at the latest movie in the franchise featuring the old and the new cast of Ghostbusters. Let's look at this. For the first time in New York history, people froze to death in the middle of July. What is it? The death chill. The power to kill by fear itself. Your veins turn to rivers of ice. Bones crack, and the last thing you see is your own tear ducts freezing up. Like, literally scared to death. <laughs> so cool. Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson are back from the original cast. They're teaming up with the new folks uh, led by Paul Rudd and the younger cast to fight off a new evil force. Uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is opening next spring. I don't know. I'm sorry. When you live in uh, Minnesota, you live that movie every day. <laughs> I, I have no... I mean, that's, that's us every day in Absolutely. the winter. So Don't need a Ghostbuster. We don't need a Ghostbuster. Who are you uh, going to call? No. MnDOT. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> we'll have Ray Parker Jr.'s, so, yeah, anyway, we're going to take a break. The Cooking Mom and More when we return. Back in a moment. Two fabulous ladies, one fabulous show. Coming up in just a little bit, The Cooking Mom returns to the Jason Show Kitchen with recipes guaranteed. Well, I mean, small guarantee <laughs> to make your Thanksgiving meal prep even easier. And then they are the most asked questions that our wine diva gets when she's out and about. What are they and how can they help you? You'll find out when The Jason Show continues. Can you believe this? Two weeks and counting until Thanksgiving. And if the thought of that, just me saying it, has you stressed out, don't worry. We're here to help. Joining us with two great options for your Thanksgiving table is the Cooking Mom. Give it up for Amy, everybody. How you doing, Fred? You know what? I so get it. 
I, can we uh, talk here? We can talk. Okay. We have police. You, you, you um, have the floor. I'm stressed. I, I get stressed. Yes. I mean, Thanksgiving, I love it because it's not like a bunch of presents. The family gets together. It's special. But, woo, I got a vegan. I got a person who doesn't do turkey. I got a this. I got a that. I got to satisfy everybody. I got. I don't know who's coming. Tell them to go to Ponderosa. <laughs> I, there's just too many things. That's uh, too many things. You know, and I, I my mom, I don't, my mom lives in Arizona. She's not sure if she's coming. My daughter, like, who's coming? Yeah. Let me know. Give um, me a total. Yeah, and, Give me yes, a number. What day are we doing this? So I get it. I'm here with you. I am not a chef. I'm a real mom in the trenches. I got secrets, tips, recipes to uh, keep your holidays fun, stress free. <laughs> And, gotcha. and the first thing, the first thing is actually my favorite item at Thanksgiving, and oh, that's yeah. the stuffing. Oh, yeah. The I stuffing. Mean, I, it's the best. It, it's like we only have it once a year. We yeah. really do. Um, well, and maybe you do. I, I don't know. I, I have it a couple. Yeah, well, yeah. hopefully you'll make this a couple times. Yeah. Here's one of my secrets. There's only so much oven space. Also, a lot, there's a few things at Thanksgiving, like the gravy, uh, some of the things that turkey carbon that those are last minute man you can't do those ahead you it's can't. all you got to pull it all to the head at the same time get the stuffing done get it in your slow cooker best stuffing ever this stuffing of mine is uh, won an award it won a contest oh. it's and it's crazy easy and then it's like that one thing that's done it's yeah. done it's sitting on your counter done so and i would argue it's a pretty important thing to have done it is yes. and, and this is homemade don't do the box it's super quick and easy so i'm gonna have you are you okay to cook yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay yeah uh, i never know jason no right. i'm cook I, yeah, okay. I, I, yeah. I'm, well, you know that i cook i know I, you i'm do. the cook in our house I know yeah you do. okay so i've got a few tablespoons of butter okay um because you know it's the holidays you, i mean it's yeah. the Holidays. And I've sautéed some onion and some celery. If you do mushrooms, and a lot of people do, I do. Mushrooms yeah. would be fabulous and in you, here. And you would add them right here, them in this here part. and leave them a little bit chunkier because we're going to do this in a slow cooker, and they kind of shrink down to nothing. So okay. maybe get the whole ones and just cut them in half. All right, for the stuffing, do love me the slow cooker liners. Love cooking, love throwing a party. Don't love doing the dishes. So no. these are great. Or spray your crock. Or have the kids do it. Free child labor. Yes. Have the kids yes. do it. You know what I mean? But doesn't always work out that That's way. That's true. You know, it's like, is anybody going to get up and help me with the dishes? Yeah. Okay. So, um, the spray the crock really well if you're not using the liner. Dump in, you know, your favorite cube stuffing, uh, the dry stuffing. If you've got more people, double this recipe. It'll still fit in your crock pot. I always double it. You Left can no double it. Yes, okay, that's good absolutely. to know. Yeah. Um, leftovers are a good thing. You don't want to be running out of the stuffing. And now it's kind of a good time to tweak that menu. Think about adding a couple dishes. And I'm not saying don't don't get rid of that sweet potato casserole you're known for because yeah. you'd be in the doghouse, right? I'm saying I do a five cheese mac and cheese do yeah i do yeah okay here i could come and ditch my family and come to you yeah. oh are you kidding me stuffing. i'm ditching my family this year i'm not yeah no we are we're having kidding. one but yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. kidding anyway um uh, you know don't don't get rid of that tried and true dish you're, you're known for but tr try doing the stuffing try doing my stuffing recipe later um i'm gonna show you a, an alternative to turkey i've got a, a fresh green bean recipe move green over beans. green bean casserole this one is fresh and pretty there's a lot of brown food at thanksgiving you know yeah. so i I've got it is very yes. It is very beige. It is. It yes. is. Um, so tons of great recipes and secrets and tips on my website, thecookingmom.com. I also have a free newsletter sending out free recipes every week. So I'm adding to the stuffing cubes about three to four cups of chicken stock. I always have like five boxes of chicken yes. stock on hand too. during Thanksgiving. You need more gravy? Throw some chicken stock in there. Yep. Uh, don't run out of gravy. This gets a little dry. Add the chicken stock. Pick up four to five things of chicken stock. And then I do, I go heavy. This is poultry seasoning. I probably buy one of these every year. I probably have eight of these in my pantry right now. Uh, so, you know, you might have it, but basically it's a seasoning blend and it, it it's Thanksgiving. Can it, I smell it, that? Yeah, it is. It's, it's Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. that's very nice. Yeah, it's basically yeah. thyme, sage, marjoram, rosemary, black pepper. Nutmeg. It's everything you it's, want, yeah. but just in one little. Yeah, yeah and I, I go, love that. it says about two teaspoons. I kind of eyeball just it. Just eyeball right. it. Yeah. This goes in, baby. This goes in where? It goes in with the stuffing. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm just going to dump, dump, dump. Okay. And I think then, I did a pretty good job sauteing that. You did yeah. perfection. Thank you. Perfection. And then um, I like to add a little, you don't have to do this, but some parsley, just because, again, everything's real brown. Let it cook low and slow for a few hours. Uh, stir it every once in a while. Check it at the end. If it's a little bit dry, add some more chicken stock. I like a, kind of a nice moist stuffing. I do too. I also don't stuff the bird anymore. I used to, but you, it's, you need way more stuffing that fits in the bird. The bird then takes forever to cook, and so I, I don't stuff. And I think the yeah. bird prefers that you don't do that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Thank you, second row, for laughing. Yeah.
at that, yeah. So here we oh. go. I mean, it's like, it is so good. I also have a ton of fun leftover recipes after Thanksgiving when you're like turkeyed out. I make some killer Minnesota hot dishes, yeah. casseroles with all the ingredients or some of the ingredients from. Yeah, um, hot dish, yeah. everybody in other parts of the country, hot dish to us means casserole. Just I did, <laughs> so you speak our language. Yes. That's right. I, everybody else is casserole, but here it's hot dish. But be careful, it's a little hot. Okay. It's a little hot, but well, I'm telling you, it's good. I'm going to eat this in the break, okay. and when we come back, I'll give you my review, which will be four stars. And uh, as Amy said, she's going to tell you to make something besides turkey that you, that your guests will love for Thanksgiving. That and more after this. Don't forget to sign up uh, for her newsletter on her website. Okay, so now we have the stuffing. It was really, really good. Uh, you can see me eating the lunch on our social media. Uh, and it now, needs gravy, though, and the turkey and the mashed potatoes, you know. Uh, that, that's lunch. I can just do that for lunch. It's all good. Uh, next, if you want a, a little turkey alternative, what are we making? So um, some people just don't, you know, I get questions all the time. I, oh, I don't want to do a big turkey, and I get it. Maybe there's just two at home. Yeah. Maybe you don't want to hassle with it. Maybe you just don't like turkey. Um, this is one of my all-time most popular popular recipes and it's weird you know sometimes I do these recipes and they're kind of way to sell school. it Amy yeah um, <laughs> way to sell it I yeah trust me on this one okay I trust you it is so darn good. It's okay. a cranberry chicken bake. It's five ingredients. And even if you don't make it for Thanksgiving, it's a great fall recipe, great holiday recipe. Cranberry. You know, cranberries like holiday, Christmas. It's just, it's fun. It's festive. I will say, I'm looking at the the ingredients here on the demo table. It's a little weird. It's weird. It's, it's weird. a little okay. Um, but trust me, but go I'm going with, with me. you. Go I'm going with, with you. Me. Okay, so boneless, skinless chicken breasts in the bottom of a 9 by 13 casserole a dish. Okay. If you were into uh, boneless uh, thighs, skinless size that would work you could probably do this with bone-in chicken too you know it's just up to you uh, we love it with the chicken breasts yeah and this is also a really budget-friendly recipe so yeah. it's like and, I'm a and breast guy that's what uh, I me do too. that's what I and I always have no, I, don't. Know, <laughs> I get I, 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 I hear you okay so and I always have chicken breasts in the freezer or whatever okay how am I supposed to recover from that you, okay. you don't you just okay. move on that's what <laughs> that's what we do here yeah so um, then why did they do this upside down I don't know but um, you have to open the can from this is whole berry cranberry sauce yeah. okay you know what I'm saying like and this is the way you have to open the can on the bottom because so. nobody wants the fancy stuff they yeah. want the can shape yeah. why, they, why do Ooh. they make you from I the bottom I don't know that's, I don't know come on so, um, ocean spray what are you doing <laughs> Yeah. Now, I got to tell you this. If you have homemade leftover cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving, I make it every year. I make it homemade. I've got recipes for it on my website. Nobody eats it. Use the leftovers to make this. I mean, it's Again, just like. Way to sell it, Amy. Yeah. yeah. But my I have to make it. It looks pretty. I dip my turkey in it. I'm the only one. Um, okay. But anyway, use the leftovers to make this. Okay. Is that true? Does anyone eat the cranberry sauce? I do not enjoy it. Uh, I, I yeah. must admit. I, I, you'd like I, mine. Mine has orange in it. I it's do. Really I've had your. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. No. I hear you. Use it to make this. One envelope of onion soup mix, the dry onion soup mix. So I know we're weird here. This is real weird. Uh, okay. I, I'm, trust me. Trust okay. me. And now here's where it gets weirder. And we have one uh, minute, so okay, I don't okay, want to. Okay, I just okay. want to pace this Western out. or Russian dressing. Okay. Whatever. It's they're both kind of the same thing. In there, a little bit of water. This is the sauce. So the chicken bathes in this sauce for like an hour in the in the oven. Gets super tender. Then uncover it for another half hour or so. It's all about the sauce, man. This sauce goes on top, cover with foil. It's a boatload of sauce. But okay. We, we like the sauce. We do. I look. It's all about the sauce. Chicken man. can be dry too, especially yes, the yeah yes, the white. Meat. Yes. So here it is. And it, it's been baking, and the sauce is like tangy and yummy, and it's got some cranberry. We love this with wild rice, couscous. Yeah. Um, I do a cranberry couscous, and this is fabulous. I'm telling you, and it's it's just something a little different. Yeah. Try it. I'm. Tr you can try I'm gonna it. try, try I, it because again. It, there's a lot of weird ingredients, but yep, it, yep, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm down, You're down with, with that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe decorate with a little cranberry, yeah. make it festive. Let me stick. It's gonna be tender as all get out. Okay, let me it, stick a little bit. Kinda, like, can I get that big old knife? Oh yeah. That's oh, what yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, actually, yeah. I don't need it. Yeah, it, that's how tender it is. It it kind of gets pull apart tender. You see that? You see that? Uh -oh. Amy. Oh. I stand corrected. That's weird, but damn good. I know. Uh, <laughs> That's really good. Give it up for Amy, everybody. <laughs> Cookingmom.com.
for all of today's recipes. Sign up for her newsletter. She offers a weekly news re uh, letter with recipes. Both of Amy's cookbooks are available on Amazon, and we'll be posting all these segments on our Jason Show YouTube and Facebook pages. Leslie Miller, when we return. No joke. That's well done. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, when you're uh, dining out, choosing something uh, to eat, typically easy, right? But choosing a wine can often lead to a little confusion, and it might you might get nervous about it. Which which one should you order? How much is it? What if uh, people are eating different foods? Well, here to answer the questions that she gets asked the most daily when she's in Target or on the street <laughs> is our wine diva Leslie Miller from On Wine. <laughs> Hello. Leslie, yes. uh, this is, uh, we were acting like this is a fancy restaurant yes. we're at, right? <laughs> we're this is we're Chez Leslie. Yes. Les 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 Les. yes, romantic <laughs> restaurant. Here Very we are. romantic. I feel it. I yeah. feel like we might have a second date. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's go through this. We have three. Here's mm -hmm. the first question. Picking wine for the table if yes. everyone is eating something different, like Amy's chicken, and yes. then some red meat people, and then some herbivores. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do? Well, you're handed these big giant wine lists, and it's so hard to get through them because there's pages and pages, so what do you do? Yeah. My thing is, you know, light-bodied grapes and full-bodied grapes, they're not always the most parable grapes. So, AKA Sauvignon Blanc, or, or literally when it comes to like a big Cabernet, they don't always pair with everything on the table. So I like to go, especially in the white realm. I like to go with a medium weighted white. So that's not on the light end of the spectrum and it's not Chardonnay. It's grapes like Grenache Gris or Viognier, Chenin Blanc, a dry Riesling, things like this actually go with so many different things across the table. And Chenin Blanc, Yes. most restaurants will have. Yes, these are grapes yeah. that you're going to find. If you don't want to look through this 27 page list, be honest with the server and say, look, I'm looking for something like Chenin Blanc or Viognier, Riesling, something like that, that does go with the entire table. And they'll tell you, a good server. They will. And if they don't know, they'll get somebody that does know it in the, in the building. Yes. Okay, number two, what to do when the waiter presents the wine. Yeah, this is always a tricky one because, you know, I love Pinot Noir again with kind of everything across the board and it'll go with like vegan and shrimp and all the steaks and things. But now you have the server come to your table and they have poured a glass of wine for you, right? So they've undone the cork, right? This is now sitting intimidatingly yeah. at your plate. Now they pour you the ounce of wine, and now what the heck are you supposed to do? Yeah, and especially if you're the person this is being done to yes. at the table, if you've ordered, if you're the one ordering, they will present to you, right? That's right. Okay, now so what do gonna, you do? They're going to hand you this with an ounce of wine inside the glass. Now, what you do is you just give it a swirl, you put your whole nose into it, and what you're looking for is something that smells that you don't like, which would be sort of like a dirty, uh, <laughs> this sort of dirty, moldy, sort of dank smell, that would mean that it is corked. I, so you're looking for that. That would be the flaw. That would be the major flaw that you're looking for. If this smells yes. like an old addict. Wet basement. Like a wet basement. Yes, yes. Do n okay, now, okay, now let me piggyback off that. Yes. Let me, I'm going <laughs> to, ooh. Now, I know a lot of people, especially Minnesotans, mm -hmm. we do not like sending things back. Yes. And, right? We do not. Right. I personally don't have a problem with tricky. that, but I'm from Chicagoland, right. so we don't care. <laughs> but um, what do you do? What, like, what would you say? What's a gr give folks a good way to say it without being rude. Yes. It's not being rude. This but. isn't about you liking it. No. You're looking for a flaw, and that's why they gave that to you. You say, oh my gosh, I've never had this wine before. Is it supposed to smell like this? Or oh, that's real something good. smells a little different to me. Would you mind trying it and telling me if this wine is good? Because you, what, but yes, at right, clap for that because right. that's really good. Because 
You said something right there. They're not doing this to be performative. No. There's a there's a reason why they are presenting it. And it's yes. not to be fancy. Right. There's a functional reason why, and that yes. is to make sure it don't smell like a nasty basement. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Which you can get that in a cork, but okay. you can also get that in wines that came in a screw cap. You are supposed to smell. Oh. And this is the same at your own kitchen counter. You know, when you open these wines, if it doesn't <laughs> smell right to you, cork it back up, put the screw cap back on it, and bring it back to the retail store. I'm sorry, Colin. This smells like basement. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no. In our house, we, we're so dramatic, we just splash each other with the wine. Anyway. So that is, I mean, yeah. that is really tricky because I always say put it back on the service team yeah. and they will help you through it. Okay, you ready for number three? This is my yeah. favorite. Yes. Here we go. Yeah. True or false? Yes. Is the second most expensive wine by the glass uh -huh. on the menu? The best one to pick out. You know, I think we this comes from Jeff, Jeff. Orcutt. Yes, yeah. we originally heard this from Jeff. Yes, and I love Explain this. Explain what we mean. So Jeff thinks that there's a formula, and Jeff's not alone, right? A lot of Americans think, oh, we're trying to be tricky with the wine list yeah. and the wines by the glass. If you order the second from the last or the second from the top, you're going to get the best deal. So sorry, Jeff. This is fake news. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> so this is not true. Really, when you're looking at, and also the cheapest glass of wine is also, like, it's not inexpensive to the max. It's just, like, there should be a nice variation of price points. Yeah. Right? So if they're... If you're looking at your menu at yes. wherever, and there's like, you know, the $10, mm -hmm. the $14, and the $24, right. Jeff always goes for that mid-range. He, he does, And that doesn't always mean it's the best. I mean, don't, no. you don't have, you can get, no. that, that cheaper one could be good. That's We've right. learned that from over the years. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I'm all about a big value-driven sort of spectrum when it comes to wine. But my thing is always ask questions yep. and be real. When you go to, you know, a restaurant, say, you know what, last night at home I had this or show them a picture of your favorite bottle and say, I like this. How can you help me find something that's similar? similar? There right. we go. Yeah. Cheers to Leslie Miller, everybody. <laughs> For more information, go to AmiZWine.com. And if you're visiting the Twin Cities, visit her shop. Sit better in the North Loop neighborhood of Minneapolis. We'll be right back. Back after this. One more. Welcome back. It is time to get to know JVIP of the week. Today, it's Nicolette Deason from Burnsville. She loves that we're real, we're caring, opinionated, and funny. Thanks, Nicolette. We love you and appreciate you. She's going to get a Jason Show mug and enter to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture. We love Becker Furniture. And a $250 gift certificate to Renew Med Spa. We love you. We'll be right back with a surprise goodbye. for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. We don't know what's in this segment until we read it for the very first time right now on the teleprompter. So here we go. Today, crazy, crazy video out of South Carolina that you have to see to believe. A cyclist was taking part in a ride recently when a deer jumped out of the brush, nearly landing. Okay, let's watch this together. Oh my, <laughs> holy crap. Here's it in slow motion. No. Santa? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Donner Blitzen, is that you? The writer says it happened so fast, he didn't have time to be scared. He just, oh. he just leaned back on the bike. The deer hit his arms and landed nearby before taking off. The cyclist wasn't hurt, and Bambi wasn't hurt. So, Good. yeah. Oh, oh my, my God. goodness. <laughs> no. No. That's that's another reason not to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can't go yeah. for the ride. A deer might hit me. Yep. Oh, rats. <laughs> oh, rats. That's why I use my Peloton. There are no deers there. <laughs> tomorrow on the show, uh, we had good food today. Good food tomorrow. Stephanie Hansen is back making a, what? A no-crust pumpkin pie. Ooh. Oh, controversial. Okay, we'll see to believe tomorrow, but right now... <laughs>
that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. No, cross. The best part. It's the whipped cream, too. No.